Hi, so today I'm going to be discussing charge and ground. So I want to talk about electrical charge, how electricity actually works in terms of having a positive or a negative voltage, and also how you get the electricity to, to do anything and what the importance of ground is. So one of the definitions of ground here is typically the reference point in a circuit is called the circuit ground. And again, if you're like me, you read that and it's like, okay, so it's the reference point, but what the fuck does that mean? And this is, this is something, again, that, that kills me with a lot of the, the definitions of all these basic concepts in a lot of these books is that they explain the basics, but you read the basic, and now you know the basics, but you don't know what, what does it really mean. And that, that's the thing I want to try to explain today. So I am going to try to explain a little, in a really crude manner, how this actually works. And I'm going to open up a page here with a schematic, and I'm going to be following along with the mouse. And I'm also going to tell you a little story. We're actually going to be telling a story. Uh, and I'm going to be using uh, relationships, so real world relationships here, as an example of it. I mean, it's probably going to be a really terrible example, but I'm going to be giving it anyway. So. You've probably heard about valence electrons. Some, somewhere in fifth or fourth or seventh grade science, you heard that you have, valent, you have these electrons that are inside the atom, and you have different valence electrons in there which, that would determine the charge. Now, you probably like to be resting, right? Like, you feel your best when you come home after a long, miserable, hard, stressful work day, and you go, ah. And you can sit down on the couch, and you can watch what you want. You can pet your cat, or you can talk to your girlfriend, whatever it is. When you're at a point of low stress, you are happy. You're content. That's where you want to be. Now, the same is true for, for, for atoms and for molecular structures. They want to be at, uh, at rest. They want to be at peace. They want, every, they want everything to be even and everything, everything to just kind of make sense for them. And the way this happens is through having an, an even amount of valence electrons. So if you have too many or too few valence electrons inside, of an atom, what's going to happen is that um, it, it's going to have a positive or a negative charge, and it very much so doesn't like that. It either wants to have an electron given to it, or it wants an electron to go away. So if you have a charged particle, that means that it, it, it's not, it's, most charged particles are not really a fan of being charged. Again, it's like you being stressed out at work. And the way this works is that it's desperate to get to a point of equilibrium where it is not charged. So just to give you an idea here of, of how desperate this actually is, I'm going to use my power supply here, and I'm going to set the voltage on my power supply here to 20 volts. So this orange wire right here represents the 20 volts, and this blue and uh, white wire over here represents the ground. So when I turn this on, and I touch them, you see that? Well, you probably can't because I'm not zoomed in. So let me get the camera zoomed in a little bit so that you can see what I'm talking about. So this is how desperate this is to be at equilibrium. You see all those sparks? It's so excited to be moving to a state to equilibrium that it instantly does that. It sparks. That being said, this is very much similar to real-world relationships between people. We know what somebody wants, so now knowing what they want, we can pretty much manipulate them. And it is, it is really sadistic when you think about it that way. It is sadistic that we are manipulating the atoms and the particles and, the, and, and everything and the molecular structures just pretty much to get what we want. But we know that this wants to be at equilibrium. We know it wants to be at rest. We know it wants to have an even amount of valence electrons where they're supposed to be. And knowing that, we are going to fuck with it, the same way that we fuck with people. So this, this is not something that I'm particularly uh, happy with, but a friend of mine is, he, he's, he's not monogamous, and, and he, he, he's, he, there's just no getting through to him that there is a, a world, a life out there that involves not, not cheating on women. So he'll be going out with these women who really love him and care about them, and, and, he, they, and they want him to become monogamous, and he'll tell, you know, he'll make it seem like, you know, oh, well, th you can do this, and you can do that, and you can try to please me and do all these things, but in the end, they never really get the relationship. They never really get the monogamous relationship that, that, that they would want out of him. And this is something that for every single day for years, I have bitched, I have screamed, I have, I, I have done everything I can to try to change it, but I, I really don't. And it, it, it's very, very much so similar to, to, seriously, this is really similar to actual relationships between people, what we do to electricity. So again, this electricity over here, it's just going to sit inside my blue wire. It's not going to do anything. It's, it's really like, you don't see electricity moving. There is nothing going on here. But when you, when you show it something that it wants, it jumps. So what can we do 
to make electricity move and do what we want in a circuit. Let me give you an idea of how this works. So I'm going to open up a schematic over here and let's show, give you an idea of what's going on. So this is, this is the backlight chip, right? So right over here, this is a backlight circuit in a unibody MacBook. Now, this is actually a retina. So over here we have the five volts that goes into power this chip over here, right? But this chip is not gonna turn on, it's not gonna do anything. The electricity, just because you attach the electricity to the chip, it's not actually gonna go through the chip without it having a path to what it wants. Again, you need to give this a path, you need to give the, the molecules, you need to give the, the particles and all that, you need to give the uh, valence electrons pretty much a path to what it is they want. And what they want is to be a ground. So right now, let's say this is five volts. Five volts, is, again, this, this, is, this is painful to the, to the little particles. Think of the little mo molecules and the particles and the atoms like, like they're crying right now because they're at five volts. Think of, think of five volts like their boss is stressing them out at work and then they're just dealing with people arguing and screaming over money all the time. They want to be zero volts. They want to be at rest. They want to be in uh, equilibrium. And the way that you get there is to go to ground. So what this chip is pretty much saying is, you know what, we'll let you go to ground. We'll give you a path to ground, but you know what, you gotta help me worry. You gotta help me with some of this stuff first. This, you know, and, and that's that's the way that this works. It's like, I'll get you what you want, but you gotta go through and power all this shit over here and go and pretty much do what I want you to do. And then you'll get to see your precious ground. Now, the, the, again, it, it really is, it is cruel when you think about it that way. It's kind of like you're taking a rabbit and you're putting a little stick on its head with a carrot at the end of it and just saying, yeah, you just keep walking and you'll get to the carrot and you have something on its back that it's carrying for you. The rabbit is never going to get the carrot. The same way the electricity is never, ever, ever, ever going to uh, be able to make its way fully to ground and become fully discharged. You're never going to allow that to happen because you want your light to keep working, because you want your Game Boy to stay on, because you want your soldering iron to stay on, because you want your car to, you know, the stereo to stay on. And, and when you think about it that way, it kind of makes sense. So ground is a reference point. What the fuck does that mean. Ground is where electricity wants to be. Gra again, the you saw the sparks over here. It wouldn't be sparking and burning to get from one side to the other it w it, if, if it didn't really want to be a ground. So it, it wa electricity wants to be a ground. Electricity does not like being 5 volts or minus 5 volts. It doesn't like being 20 volts or minus 20 volts. It doesn't enjoy being there. It would rather be at zero. If electricity wanted to be at 20 volts, when you attach the 20 volts to the ground, it wouldn't fucking go running through to be at zero. Zero. But it does. Now again, the electricity itself, think of it like some of my past employees. They're fairly, they're fairly lazy. They don't want to do anything. They're not going to get up off their ass and do anything. So the way I, you get them to do anything is you connect ground on one side. Or here I could say, well, you know what? You didn't do your job this week, so I'm just going to keep this paycheck over here until you do all this work. So I'm not going to give my employee the paycheck. I'm going to say, here's your paycheck. Here's the work that you were supposed to do over this entire week. I'll give you the paycheck but you gotta go through this pile of work first. Here in the circuit, it's saying, you know, five volts, the, the U9701 is saying, you know what, five volts, I'll let, you, uh, I'll let you go to ground, but you gotta go through me and do some work first. What makes this cruel is that the electric, it really never gets to, to become zero charge. And when it does go to zero charge, we just, we just plug our charger in and charge it back up again and store the energy. It really is, uh, it is a fundamentally cruel process. You have all these groups out there that talk about the rights of animals, about the rights of these endangered species, but no one, well, who's out there thinking about the poor electricity? I mean, it really, it is, it is tragic. Um, but that, that is pretty much the purpose of ground. It is, now, ground on a circuit is usually going to be something like a, like a screw hole or the casing or something like that. And now, when it's called a reference point, let me also give you an idea of how that works when you're doing measurements. Because a lot of people will say, you know, how do you measure or how, where do I put the probes in my multimeter when I'm measuring a circuit? So here's my multimeter in voltage mode. I'm going to take out this motherboard that semi-works plug it in and we're going to measure some stuff on it and I'm going to show you what that means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in and then I'm going to measure the 12 volt rail. I'm going to take the black probe, which is the reference probe, this the black one is the reference probe, and put it on ground, which is a screw hole or any one of the metal surfaces that's not actually attached to a working power line. So on here, ground is pretty much, you know, again, ground is like uh, any of the metal stuff that's not attached to a power line. So pretty much you know, like a screw hole, a casing, something like that. So I'm going to put the black probe on the screw hole and then the red probe on a fuse for the 12.6 volt rail. And what I see here is 12.55, which is close enough, right? Now watch what happens when I put my red probe on the 12 volt power line, but I put my black reference probe on a 3 volt power line instead of putting it on the 0 volts of ground.
I get something different. So what it's done is it's actually subtracted voltage. So my 12 volt line, when my reference is attached to a 3 volt line, becomes 9 volts. If I attach my reference to a 0 volt line, it's 12. When I put it on the, when my reference on the 3 volt line, it's 9. So in order to actually measure voltage, you need to have a reference point. You need to have something to attach it to. And now it's 7. So what I've done now, there is I put my black probe on a 5 volt line. So now it's doing 12.6 volts minus 5. So the, this, you really just have to put on something that represents uh, what you're measuring again. What this thing is doing is it is not actually measuring voltage. It's measuring the difference between the two probes. This thing has no idea how much voltage is in that circuit. All it knows is the amount of voltage in the circuit compared to the amount of voltage on the other side of it, which is the black probe. So the black probe goes in a screw hole because that's zero, and then it allows this probe to tell me the exact voltage at any point on the board. So that's pretty much ground for you, and that's charge, and that's how electricity goes from one point to another. A very simple and over, uh, so oversimplified explanation, but again, my, my, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to explain it in a manner where you don't have to know joules and columns and formulas and any of that stuff to be able to figure out what's going on.